Hey, Dan, what do you do as an investor? And you have world leaders and states uh, restricting or wanting to ban uh, big oil. What do you do with that? Yeah, I think, I think that's today's current environment is everybody's beating up on the sector. Uh, more regulation, more uh, apathy around the sector. It's made stocks cheap. So you sort of sift through the ashes and trying to find good value. Have you been able to find any good value with all these headlines? Well, I think the whole space is probably reflecting longer term prices than we'll actually see. Space is reflecting something in the 40s. We think that something in the 50s or 60s is much more likely. So um, the whole space looks cheap. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about Conoco. That's, that's a name that looks uh, cheap with a lot of free cash here. I think the industry is adapting to a lower commodity price environment. That's really important. And discipline's coming back to the space. And so um, there's, there's just a lot of opportunity out there generally. Before we specifically move to Conoco, I mean, would your sort of lens be focused on a company like Conoco or a more specialized company that then could have more exposure if there are restrictions on fracking or there's a fracking ban? Which do you feel like proposes more value for you? Yeah, I think a fracking ban isn't particularly realistic, Alex. The, the challenge is it sounds great until you think about the implications. The, the folks that want to ban fracking also want low-cost energy and low gasoline prices, and you're not going to have that if you start taking uh, drilling opportunities off the table. So prices go into the 70s, 80s, 90s if you ban fracking. And so, you know, I wouldn't necessarily focus on, on companies that benefit from that because I don't think it's going to happen. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd really be more focused on the blocking and tackling producers. All right, so let's get to the blocking and tackling producers. And part of that's Conoco. They had their 10-year plan uh, unleashed today. Huge return uh, for shareholders, buybacks, dividends. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway here on their plan? Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway was they are adopting to the world that we are in, not hopeful for something to improve. And so they're kind of $50 billion, 10-year plan says oil's at 50 for that whole time period. And um, they've adopted a, a kind of a low cost of supply model that, that makes money in that environment. And so I think that's where the whole industry is going. Conoco's uh, got a great asset base uh, that they can kind of live in this world and make great money. And again, that comes back to the value in the space. This company can buy back half of their market cap over the next 10 years. Uh, with oil prices at the current level. They've adopted to the world we're in. And that's a staggering, I mean, like half of its market cap. Uh, you echo very s similar things to Liam Denning, who's a columnist here at Bloomberg. He said Conoco's message is that just ensuring that you don't spend more than you make in a given year isn't the cure for the sector's ills. Rather, it's about smoothing spending and production and payouts over time. Who else is on to this? Yeah, I think, I think most of the industry is moving this direction, whether it's the independent E&P companies out in the Permian, the big majors. Everyone's essentially said, we can't count on prices being higher. And so they've uh, adopted uh, drilling in locations that make money where oil's 50. Uh, they've adopted, you know, they're selling non-core properties where they think the, the operating costs are too high. And so I, I think it's the whole industry. Uh, some of the smaller companies are still focused on growth, but... For the most part, most of the market cap in the space is thinking about capital discipline, better returns, dividends, share repurchase, and, and that's what's going to bring investors back to the space eventually. So you mentioned Conoco. Uh, who else would you like right now? We like the Permian producers, EOG Resources, uh, Diamondback Energy, Concho, Parsley, uh, folks with, with great positions in low-cost basins. Uh, again, those stocks are all, you know, underperforming the S&P and many are underperforming their peers for the year. But those are names where, you know, we think the, the cost of the resource is very attractive and investors will eventually come back.